Hi everybody. Welcome back to That Girl's Yoga YouTube channel. My name is Cindy Shapiro and I'm going to record for you today a gentle flow yoga. So what is gentle flow? Gentle flow basically means breath to movement. Very similar to vinyasa, which is under the umbrella of hatha yoga. Vinyasa means breath to movement. And we will be doing some vinyasa postures here, but at a very, very gentle level. And you can join this class regardless if you have a, an avid vinyasa practice or if you are a beginner, or if you really are just looking for a gentle practice to tune inward and really find space in the body. Gentle flow has been designed for helping us to find space in our body. So often we're always in this mode of the act of doing and going and, and our minds are always so busy and our bodies are always so busy. This class is going to help you to drop into down regulation. And down regulation is that place where we are, where we're relaxing and maybe the eyes are closed and we might be daydreaming or just about that space where we are about to wake up in the morning and you're feeling really relaxed. That's the same feeling that we're going to cultivate today in this gentle flow class. I offer you, as always, when I teach any type of a class, to honor where you are in this practice. If there's anything, even in a gentle flow class, that feels uncomfortable for your body, something that I cue, and I don't offer you a modification, but you can find one that works really well for you, please take that modification. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you honor where you are in your practice. That is when I really started to learn what the true meaning of yoga is. Regardless of how long I personally practice yoga, once I started practicing gentle flow yoga, it's taught me so much more awareness. And even in those, those tougher vinyasa classes that I go to, or even you know if I go to an Iyengar class, it's taught me so much about how I need to honor my body and where I am not just in each class, but where I am in each moment and in each breath. There can be days where we can wake up and feel completely different from the day before that. So what you'll need for your class today is basically a blanket. If you have props, you, please feel free to go ahead and grab your props. I traditionally teach with one blanket, two blocks, and a strap. Today, you see that I don't have any props with the exception of the blanket that I'm sitting upon. And the reason for that is because I'm going to show you how to practice a gentle flow yoga class in your home without the use of props. Not everybody has the props. And especially since, you know, it's we can't go out and go shopping right now and Amazon is a little delayed and whatever the reason is, we don't have access to props. I want to show you how you can find access to find this really beautiful release in gentle flow yoga without using any props. To get started, find a blanket similar to the one that I was just sitting upon. This is a Mexican blanket. Now, if you don't have a blanket like this, uh, a bath towel will work really nice. And you're going to fold that blanket so it creates a nice sense of support underneath the back of the head and the neck. And you'll place your blanket so that it's at that top back portion of your mat, and you'll come to lie onto your back. When you lie to your back, please make sure that your chin can rest comfortably above your chest. Let your eyes softly close and bring your knees into your chest. Take a little rock from side to side to massage your back. your breath. What is the natural rhythm of the breath as you take this little rock massaging through the low back, mid back, backs of shoulders, and the upper back.
Inhale to extend the hands and the bent knees to arms length distance. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale, blow the air out of the lips. Bring the bent knees into the chest. Inhale to extend. Now find that extension in the, the abdominal muscles. Exhale, blow the air out of the lips and feel that constriction in the belly when the knees come into the chest. Continue with the pace of your breath, creating this gentle pumping action. Notice how this creates a contraction in the release. The next time your knees come into your chest, release the breath, come back to the natural rhythm of your breath as you transition into sacral circles. Circle the knees together in one direction. Keep your hands to your kneecaps to support the hips, the low back, and the pelvis. We'll use our hands a lot today to support our body. Very similar to how we we'll use our breath to support our body. Reverse the direction. If you haven't already done so, invite your eyes to close. awareness begin to move inward now lower your left foot down to the mat keep your right knee into your chest place your right hand to the top of the right kneecap and send your left arm out to the side now notice as we drop this left shoulder down how that broadens through the collarbone now underneath the left collarbone is our pectoralis minor muscle. It's a very, very important breathing muscle that we'll use in this practice today quite a bit. Place right hand to the right kneecap and come into half wide knee circles. It doesn't matter which direction you start in, whichever feels the most authentic and nourishing for you. Reverse the direction. Sense the contraction and the release in the hip through the awareness of the breath. And lower the right foot down to the mat. Feel the four corners of the right foot in contact with the mat as you bring left knee into your chest. Send your right arm off to the side, back of the hand onto the floor, palm to face the ceiling. The four corners of the right foot are the space behind the big toe, the little toe, and on either side of the heel. Transition into half wide knee circles, circling left knee. Honor where you are in sensation in this left hip. If you need to make the circle smaller, invite that. If you need to slow the movement down, please invite that. Reverse the direction. Place left hand onto your heart and your right hand onto your belly. Relax the collarbones and feel the elbows rest down to the mat as you bring awareness to the breath in the belly. For belly breath, we breathe into the belly and feel the belly expand. The hand on the belly will gently rise. Exhale to blow the air out of the lips. This is called crow's breath. Let the air release through the lips and feel the belly and the
you can feel the breath rise beyond the belly into the ribs and possibly up underneath the collarbones. Invite the muscles in the face to soften as you focus on the space between the eyebrows. Feel the eyes as they gently soften into their sockets, the eyelids. Rest gently over the eyes as both the right and the temple soften. Both the right and the left side of the jaw gently release. Soften the space behind the backs of both ears. Feel that the back of the neck is long, the trapezius muscles release away from the backs of the ears as the shoulders release away from the ears back and down the back now release your crow's breath and come into a gentle ujjayi breath there's a soft constriction in the back of the throat as you feel the breath breathe in through the nose and the breath will continue to release out of the nose now if this doesn't feel good for your practice you're going to choose a breath that's going to work the best for you. What we do here when we use the breath in and out of the nose is it helps the breath to slow. When the breath slows, the mind will slow and the body will follow the guidance of the breath. As you continue to stay aware of the breath, feel once again the four corners of the feet in contact with the earth. Feel the back of your sacrum in contact with sacrum is the back of the pelvis and as that sacrum rests into the earth feel the SI joints find if you can have equal weight in both the back of the right hip and the left hip so that your pelvis is neutral take a moment to just observe how the body is the physical body is feeling today and if there is an intention that you would like to set for your practice yourself a moment to set that intention. If you're new to setting an intention, it can be a word, a sentence, a short paragraph, anything that you feel that you would like to bring into this practice. set an intention together to stay in a space of loving kindness towards ourselves, offering ourselves the practice that's going to feel the most beneficial and the most nurturing. If there's a time during your practice where you want to just rest in child's pose or rest in shavasana, you always have that option to come and rest. This is your practice. This isn't something that you have to do. This is just a really nice way to create awareness and to really explore sensation in the body and where you can find space. Now, as we've had these intentions set together, let's take one more round of the cleansing breath to set these intentions and breathe in through the nose and let that intention rise from the base of the pelvis into the belly. Feel it rise into the ribs as your inhale continues up into the chest underneath the collarbones. Exhale with a crow's breath. Blow your intentions out to the universe. Release the arms out to the side to set up for windshield wipers. You can walk your feet closer together or bring them out to hips with distance. Drop the knees to your right as you turn your head to the left. Come back to center with the knees and the head. Keep the backs of the hands onto the floor. Drop the knees to the left and turn the head to the right. Continue with the pace of the breath. Really sense where you're creating space in the body. Notice that the earth is there to pull the gravity of the body as we release the knees. The gravity of the shoulders to create space in that side of the body that's 
we create this gentle wringing out of all the back muscles, the muscles along the side of the body, the muscles in the front of the body. All these muscles pertain to the deep front line of the body where our stress response is housed. Now come on back to center and bring your right knee into your Roll out your right ankle. Reverse the direction. And cross right ankle over the left thigh, figure four pose. Place your right hand to the center of the right thigh. Left arm extends out toward left side. Back of the hand rests onto the floor. Relax through the back of the hand as you soften through the left palm. Inhale to sip the breath in, press the thigh into the hand, create resistance. As exhale, press the thigh away and soften into sensation. Take two more rounds at the pace of your breath. your right hand to the right thigh and very similar to what we were doing with our contraction and release you'll just apply a little bit of pressure to the right thigh if this feels comfortable take a rock side to side in your reclined pigeon or this modified variation of figure four pigeon now if you want to take this a little deeper clasp your hands over the front of the left shin Notice the shoulders, invite them to rest away from the ears and find space across the collarbones. Take breath into the belly and feel the belly soften as it releases that exhale out through the hips and invite softness as you release into sensation. several more rounds here just exploring if you want to rock or stay stationary noticing the breath assist Variation. If 
you feel comfortable here with the left knee bent, keep the left knee bent. If you'd like to go a little deeper into sensation, you'll extend through the left leg, press out through the left heel, so that you're creating two right angles with the legs. Notice the collarbones, invite them to relax as you send breath into the belly. Find length and softness, release in the right hamstring as you exhale. Now this is variation A of Supta Padangustasana. For variation B, you'll keep just your right hand behind the back of the right thigh. Left arm will open out to the side. You can find that space across pectoralis minor muscle. And then open the right leg out to the side. The minute you feel your left hip lift up, this is your cue that as you come into variation B, you might want to create a little bit more support for your body. By bending left knee, I'll bring the left knee into the chest and hold on at the shin, and then that helps to create a neutral pelvis so you can find more space in the right inner thigh muscles and the outer thigh muscles. Press out through the right heel. You can also take your hand and bring it into the inside of the thigh. That's a little bit more advanced. I would probably suggest behind the thigh. And you can also place your right elbow down onto the mat, and that'll help those collarbone, the right collarbone, to release. Take a breath into the belly. Exhale, slide the air out of the nose, and soften into sensation. Take one more round, breathe in. Side the air through the nose. Lower the left leg down, bring the right leg back up toward the sky. For variation C, you take your right leg, keep the back of the right hip down onto the mat, and rest the back of the right thigh to the top of the left thigh. Right arm goes out to the side. Now you can take your left hand and place it to the outside of the middle of the right thigh. You can lift the leg up just a little bit and pull that leg a little closer into your chest. Press into the right heel, spread the toes as you feel the back of the right hip press down. And this gives you more sensation in the IT band and the outer edge of the right leg. Take a breath in through the nose. Side the ear through On back to center for variation A, bend into your right knee. Either keep your hands behind the back of your right hand behind the back of the right thigh or have happy baby pose or behind the back of the right calf. Or if you can go into a more advanced variation, you'll place your right hand to the outer edge of the right foot. Left knee will stay bent or you can lengthen the left leg is a more advanced variation. If this feels uncomfortable for you, you'll always have that option of bringing the knee into the chest and hold the knee out a little bit wider than the right shoulder. Take breath again into the belly. Sigh the air out of the nose. where you can create space in the body. And one more sigh out of the nose for our gentle Ujjayi breath. Bring your right knee into your chest to set up for Ardha Apanasana. Gentle point to the left toes. Bring the forehead up to the right knee or just a slight lift up for Ardha Apanasana. Inhale to a full body stretch. Point fingers, point toes. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the body. Notice the difference of the right side versus the left side. Now you might feel that you are quite a bit taller, maybe an inch or two on the right side from the left side, because we've created all this space, not only in the leg, but we've created space in the upper part of the body too. Bend into the right knee, bend into the left knee. Feel the four corners of the right foot press into the mat as you bring left knee into the chest. 
roll out the ankle. Reverse the direction. Half wide made circle. Keep your hand onto the left knee, left hand onto the left knee. It's a very gentle rotation we want to take here. As we create these hip circles, we create more mobility in the hips to help find space in the pelvis. This helps us to release the stress response, which is held in the psoas muscles. The psoas muscles run across the front of our hips, and they originate the second rib just underneath the pectoralis minor muscles. Reverse the direction. Our iliopsoas muscles run along the front of the body, both the right side and the left side. And they are really important breathing muscles to find release of the deep front line in the bottom. Cross left ankle over the right thigh for figure four. Now we'll do our PNF again. PNF is when we talked about on that first side that contraction and release. Inhale, sip the breath in, press the thigh into the hand. Notice all the muscles at work. As exhale, press the thigh away. Soften into sensation. Two more rounds at the pace of your breath. PNF basically means contraction and release. Its scientific name is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Took me a long time to learn how to say that. And was that really important for me to know? I feel like in my industry, yes. And sometimes I feel that it's important for me to share with you that it is a really important thing to bring into your practice. Transition into reclined pigeon pose as you pull the legs into the chest. Clasp your hands either behind the back of the right thigh over the shin if you want to go deeper, relax the collarbones, the throat, back of the neck, feel the jaw soften, the muscles in the face relax, or no props at all, place the foot onto the mat, if you have a block, you can tuck the block underneath your foot to turn this into a restorative variation. If you don't have props, we'll place the left hand to the center of the left thigh, Right arm out to the side, and you can apply a little bit of pressure. And take a little rock, create some movement in the body if that feels comfortable for you. Feel the breath as it moves into the belly. Exhale to feel the breath release. Tension and tightness through those iliopsoas muscles out through the hips. Lower the right foot down, bring the left knee into the chest, extend left leg up toward the sky. Find your variation where you're going to feel most comfortable and that you don't have to work at this. Variation A, Supta Pada Gustasana. Press the left heel up toward the sky. Let the toes point toward the wall behind you. Relax the collarbones and soften through the muscles of the head, neck, and shoulders. Maybe you explore deeper sensation by extending through the right leg. Release the hamstrings down toward the floor. Let the toes point toward the sky. Find space in the front right side of the lap. Breathe awareness into both sets of hamstrings. When we engage in the hamstrings, it helps us to find space in the chest. So notice as you press the left heel toward the sky, that space that you can feel across the collarbones. Variation B. So keep your hand to the, the outside of the left thigh. Open the left leg. Maybe the elbow rests onto the floor. As you find that space, left leg opens out wide. Right leg can stay long. Back of the right hand onto the floor. So we find space across the pectoralis minor muscles on the right side. Now, if this is a lot of 
work for you. Now bend into the right knee. I'll bring that knee into the chest. This is always my favorite way to practice this pose. And a lot of that is because my ego gets in the way. I want to go into the deepest variation. So this is a lot of what I teach to do. Gentle Yoga has taught me so much about myself, so much about things that I think I want to do, not really the things that I should do for my body. Lower the right foot down, bring the left leg up toward the sky. Variation C, we'll place the back of the left thigh to the top of the right thigh. And you can always walk your right foot out a little bit wider. And that will give you a little bit more space to let the le rest the left leg here. Maybe you can feel a little more into the outer left IT band. If you need more space, send your left arm off to the side, back of the hand onto the floor. Maybe you place your right hand to the outside of the left thigh. Keep the back of the left hip down. Just breathe into, into sensation as you press the heel toward the right side of the room. Take a breath into the belly. And soften as you sigh out through the nose. One more round. Breathe in. Sigh it out through the nose. Lift the left leg up toward the sky for variation A. Find your version of happy baby pose. <coughs> Excuse me, maybe the hand goes behind the back of the left thigh or behind the calf or you can place it to the outside edge of the left foot. Right knee can stay bent. Relax and broaden through left collarbone. Maybe you extend through the right leg. Press out through the heel but keep the pelvis neutral here. So if you feel, I'm going to demo what this looks like you feel that your half happy baby is looking like mine where my right hip and my right buttocks is lift up off the mat and my hamstrings are no longer in connection with the earth, that is your cue to bend the knee through. But if you can keep the leg down and the hamstrings down, offer that awareness. And I'll share with you that there are days where I can't come into this variation that I'm in. And that's okay how to meet myself exactly where I am in each present moment. Noticing this moment of now and what can come up in the moment of now and what I can release through my breath. Transition into a full happy baby pose. Grab on. Remember, outsides of the edges of the feet is comfortable. Bring your hands to the insides of your thighs behind the calves, or this is an even gentler variation. Walk your hands to your shins or to your ankles, press the elbows into the thighs, maybe the toes come together, but the knees go out wide. It's creating that same opening, that same space across the pelvis, the sacrum, and through both the left and the right hip flexor. If it feels comfortable for you, Invite a little rock side to side. Feel the sacrum broaden to the mat. Soften and broaden through the collarbones. Release your shoulders down. Extend the legs up toward the sky. Extend the arms up toward the sky. Roll up the wrists and roll up the ankles. Big breath in here. 
exhale, full body stretch. Sigh all the air out of the mouth. Take a moment here to just observe your body. Bend your right knee, bring your right foot to the mat. Bend your left knee, bring your left foot to the mat. Sutta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet come together. Press the heels towards each other. Press the big ball of each foot in toward the opposite ball of the opposite foot. Let your knees go out wide. Now, if you need extra support underneath the thighs and you have your blocks, tuck your blocks underneath the thighs. Otherwise, you can use your hands if you need some support. Make fists with the hands and rest them underneath the thighs and feel the collarbones broaden. You already have that support or you don't need any support. Place a bend into the elbows, box the hands onto the floor to create full post arms. Breathe into the belly and feel the belly expand. Feel that expansion move all the way up to underneath the collarbones of the pectoralis minor muscles. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the mouth and feel the collarbones from the chest to the ribs to the belly down to the base of the pelvis out through the knees take two more rounds of this breath bring your hands to the outsides of the thighs close the knees together Hug your knees into your chest, let the big toes touch. Transition to wide knee circles. When knees come back together, hug them into the chest and continue with these wide knee circles. We touch the toes together to create support for the low back. We want to always find support for the low back. You'll feel maybe that we use a lot of abdominal muscles today, even though we were on the back. And what this does is this helps to strengthen our abdominal muscles so that we can strengthen the low back, our hip flexors, and the stress response. Now reverse the direction. Open the knees out wide. Bring the knees into the chest. And extend hands and knees to arms length distance. Keep going in this reverse direction as we release synovial fluid through the hip flexors. to your right hand side to come into a fetal position. Take your time to press yourself up and as you press up, come to lie onto your belly. Remove your blanket if it's there and lie onto your belly in a prone pose. I'm going to turn on my horizontal mat and lie on my horizontal mat because it'll be easier for you to see me at home as I come into this somatic version of low cobra. I'll bend my right elbow. I'll bring my right palm so it comes across toward the left side of the mat. I'll lower my left ear down to my right elbow. My left hand is long, so my fingers are pointing toward my left toes. The back of my left hand has become an anchor, as has my pubic bone. If your low back feels sensitive, you can walk the feet out a little wider. This is going to help us build strength in the upper and the mid back. Inhale to use the right arm to lift the head, chest, and shoulders up. This is our low cobra variation. Exhale, lower down, and completely relax all the muscles in the body. Inhale again to lift up for your low cobra variation. Exhale, lower back and down. One more round, inhale to lift up, and exhale to lower back and down. This time, we invite the left leg to lift about four inches off the mat. Use your right arm, lift head, chest, and shoulders. Back of left hand is still down, left foot lifts four inches. Lower back and down, and completely relax all the muscles of the body. Inhale again to lift up, 
Notice how pubic bone is helping to anchor as is the right foot and the back of the left hand, lower down. Completely relax all the muscles. One last round, we inhale to lift up, find space. Exhale, lower down, completely relax and soften. We'll move to the second side, lengthen right arm long, back of the hand onto the floor, bend into the left elbow so the left palm comes toward the outer right edge of the mat. Come to rest to the back of the right ear, to the back of the left hand. Press into the back of the right hand and the pubic bone. Inhale, use that left arm to lift head, chest, and shoulders up. Exhale, lower down, completely relax and soften all the muscles. Inhale again, lift up. You'll notice we're still doing P and F. Exhale to lower down, completely relax. Inhale one more time, lift on up. Exhale to lower down, completely relax. And this time we'll let the right leg lift up. About four inches, use left arm. And lower down and completely relax all the muscles. Inhale again to lift up, right leg about four inches of left arm lift. Lower down and completely relax. One last round, lift on up. Lower arm down and completely relax. Place a bend into the elbows, bring the forehead to the mat. Inhale for tabletop pose. Stack the knees underneath the hips and the palms underneath the shoulders. If you need support for your knees, please place a blanket underneath the knees. Once you've found your comfortable tabletop variation, begin to round through the spine for cat pose. Roll the shoulders forward, bring the chin into the chest. Inhale, let the tail lift first. Let that energy move through the spine to help lift the crown, broaden through the collarbones, expand through the heart, cow pose. Keep going at the pace of your breath. Feel how the breath assists with the articulation of the movement of the spine. Breath originating from the pelvis as the movement originates from the pelvis. At the end of your exhale, press back, extended child's pose. Your toes come together, stretch, hips press back toward the heels. As you press the hips back toward the heels, let the sternum stay lifted, lengthen the arms, drop the forehead down. Find support for the forehead, either to the mat or by stocking your fist. If you have props, you can place a block underneath the forehead. Take a breath in, feel the back body expand. Sigh the air out of the mouth as you feel the back body soften. Inhale into tabletop pose. Stack the knees underneath the hip. Take your right leg for half sun guard. Extend it out behind you. Let it lift at hip height. Place a flex to the foot. Extend out through the crown. Dynamic sun guard. Bring the knee into the chest. Exhale, round through the spine. Inhale, lengthen. Press out through the heel at the crown. Lift up nice and tall. Exhale to round as we gently warm to the end. Director spinae muscles. You'll feel that we're working even more here with the abdominal muscles. Now, this isn't necessarily considered core work, but there is an added bonus. You will see some definition in the body from practicing this gentle flow. Last round. Inhale to lengthen, lower the right knee down, press back for extended child's pose. Breathe into the hips, breathe into the back body. Find that support for your forehead. Inhale to tabletop pose. Stock your joints. 
half sunbird. Extend left leg out. Flex through your foot. Now pull the belly into the spine. And how that happens naturally is when the sternum is lifted. The sternum is where the breastbone is. And if we feel that lifted, that's going to help pull the belly up to protect the low back. Round through the spine for your flow as you exhale. Inhale to lengthen, find space. Exhale to round. Continue at the pace of your breath. Bring it on back. Lower the knee down. Take down dog. Press your hips up toward the sky. Bend and straighten through one knee at a time. If down dog isn't working for your practice today, stay in the tabletop pose. You can come back to cat cow or create circles in the hips. You can also do down dog at the wall, which I'm going to demo for you right now. You'll come to stand facing the wall. Place your hands onto the wall. Step your feet back. Your hands will slide down and bring your feet so that they're right underneath the hips. You create an upside down L shape. You can bend and straighten through one knee at a time. Come back to stillness if you're in down dog. Step to the top of the mat to come into forward fold. If you're at the wall, come into a forward fold. If you're in tabletop pose, Find your way up to a forward fold. Inhale, bring the hands to the shins for flat back. Exhale to fold. Place your hands onto your thighs and place a bend into the knees. Let your sternum, where the breastbone is, press you up as you press into the heels for Tadasana. Inhale, lift arms up toward the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. I stepped back so that you guys can see my arms. Take an inhale, lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, release the arms down by the sides. Place little curls to your fingertips so your fingertips point up toward your armpit. Bend into the left elbow and lean a little bit to the right for a side body stretch. Notice the knees, keep a soft bend into them. Inhale, come up. Exhale to lengthen. Continue this gently from side to side as we find space in the intercostal muscles, the obliques, the transverse abdominal muscles, and many more that I won't bore you with. <laughs> Just know that this is really good for the body. Last round over to the right. Last round over to the left. Bring it back center, lift the arms up toward the sky. Interlace the fingers over the head. Flip your palms up toward the sky. So I know you can't see my hands right now, so I'm gonna bring them out in front of me so I can show you what they look like over the head. Can you touch the thumb tips and the pinky tips together? No have to's on this. Lengthen through the arms, let the ribs drop down toward the hips. Press into the outer edges of the heels. Soft, gentle bend into the knees. Bring your hands. Clap, keep them clasped together behind the back of the head. Inhale, let the gaze lift up toward the sky. Exhale, bend into the knees. Squeeze the elbows together. Sink back into the hips. It's a variation of chair pose. Inhale, open. This is a variation of standing cow. This is a variation of Standing cat and chair pose together. Inhale again to open, find space. Exhale, sink the hips back. Chin into the chest, elbows come together. Inhale, come on up to stand. Exhale, release the arms down by the sides. Take warrior one pose. Step your right foot forward and step your left foot back. Have your hips square to the front of the room. If you need more space, you'll walk your right hip over. Press into the outer edge of the left heel as you place a nice bend into the right knee. Lift arms up toward the sky. Straighten through the front leg. Take an inhale. Exhale, bend into the knee. Bend the elbows, side it out. Pranamudra. Inhale to lengthen. 
exhale, bend to the knee, to the elbows, Vana Mudra. One more round, inhale to lengthen. Exhale, bend the elbows, side it out, Vana Mudra. Lift the arms up toward the sky for your warrior one. Press into the back heel, let the chest stay lifted. Release ribs down. Beautiful, bring hands in toward heart center. Step the back foot up to meet the front foot and shake it out. Now bend into the right knee to prepare for a tree pose. Take the right heel, bring it into the inside, just above the left ankle, right there at the inside of the left leg. Make sure that your left hip isn't poking out to the side here. I'm gonna move that, that string on my shirt, that tie on my shirt out of the way so you guys can hear see what I'm talking about. What we wanna do is think, we're pulling that hip in and the left leg is long so the right knee can find space and have support with this left leg. Hands into heart center. Lengthen the arms up toward the sky once you've found your balance. If this feels like it's a sufficient tree pose, stay here and take five more rounds of breath. If you want to go deeper, bring your hands to your hips and maybe bring the heel of the right foot to the inside of the left calf. Find your hand variation. We've got three breaths left. If you want to go all the way, bring the heel to the inside of the left thigh. Now press into the left thigh muscles into the right foot. Bring hands in toward heart center. Find your balance. Those of you taking version one or two, stay with us to take three more rounds. If you're finished, come out of your tree pose. Good. Bring the hands into heart center. Step the foot down and shake it out. So if you're in carpeting like I am, you might notice that it's a little bit harder to balance. Um, it's easier when we're in a yoga studio because yoga studios typically have um, hardwood floor and that gives us a lot more stability. Now, uh, you're gonna step your left foot forward for warrior one and bring your right foot back. Traditionally, this is taught with the heel to arch alignment. Remember, this is gentle yoga. If you need more space, you'll just walk that left foot out so it's more of a, of a heel to heel alignment. The right toes are pointing toward that upper right corner of the mat as you place a nice bend into the left knee. Lift the arms up toward the sky, straighten through the front leg on your inhale. Bend into the knee, bend into the elbows, prana mudra, side and out. Inhale to straighten, front leg, lift the arms. Exhale, bend the elbows, side it out. One more round, lengthen. Exhale, bend into the elbows, side it out. Lift your arms up, take warrior one for three rounds of breath. Make sure you're pressing into both big toes. Feel where you can find space in the body. The chest is nice and lifted. Hands into heart center. Step back foot up to meet the front foot and shake it out. Tree pose. Second side. All right. So our right foot is our standing foot. We find our drishti, our gaze out in front of us. Hands come to the hips. We bend into the left knee. Now, naturally, when we do that, we have to press a little more into the standing leg. And sometimes that presses the hip out. So we just become aware of it and we bring that hip in as we press into the outer edge of the standing foot. And find those four corners. It's really important because that helps us when we find the foundation in our poses, we can stay in these poses a little longer. We pivot on the left toes, bring the heel just above the ankle. Now you know the three variations. Find the one that works best for you. And once you've found it, start with the hands at heart center. Fan the left knee out to the side. Find your breath. When you feel good and balanced, let your arms lift up toward the sky. Relax the shoulders down as the chest is lifting. Beautiful. Feel all that space that we've created in the body today. One more breath in. Fill 
let the hands come into heart center. Step the left foot down and shake it out. Now step your feet out wide to prepare for warrior two pose. Place a bend into the right knee and pivot on the right toes. Warrior two is traditionally taught heel to arch. If this feels uncomfortable for you, you can place your, your front foot out a little bit more to the right so that it's a heel to heel alignment. I personally like heel to arch. That's what works best for me. Bend into the right knee. Keep the chest lifted. Open the arms out wide. Now notice the back foot, it's at a 45 degree angle. And we wanna feel that outer edge of the back foot press into the mat so that we feel a nice lift here into the inner thigh. As the arms stay open, turn the gaze to look over the front hand. Take a breath in and exhale, find somewhere to soften in the body. Relax through the collarbones, the shoulders. Inhale, lengthen through the front leg, lift the arms up. Dynamic warrior two, come back. Inhale, lift up, find space. Exhale, back to Virabhadrasana two. Hold on the inhale, stay for the exhale. Inhale to reverse, lift the front arm up. Straighten front leg, reverse your triangle pose. Bring right hand to the right hip and turn the feet to face forward. Bend into the left knee for warrior two on the left side. Set yourself up, each side's gonna feel a little different. Now notice this front knee, we wanna make sure it's not rolling inward. You might not have noticed that on that first side because you were concentrating so much on where the muscles were. So let that left knee face forward. Press into the outer edge of the back foot, open the arms out wide, turn the gaze forward. Take a breath in as you gently squeeze the fingertips together, keep the sternum lifted. Exhale, soften into the pose. Inhale, straighten front leg for a dynamic warrior two. Exhale, come to two. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, back to two, stay and hold, inhale, exhale, soften, this helps us to build our bone density, inhale to reverse warrior two, exhale, straighten through front leg, reverse your triangle pose, bring your hands to your hips, and step your feet in together to meet each other. Mountain pose, lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, forward fold, hands through heart center. Hinge at the hips. If you need a bend into the knees, please offer a bend into the knees. Inhale for flat back and exhale down fold. Step yourself back to downward facing dog pose or tabletop pose. Take a breath in your down dog. Exhale, lower down to tabletop pose. Step your right foot forward for low lunge. As you bring this right foot forward, you'll take your right hand and place it onto your right thigh. Press your chest up. You'll notice that your left fingertips will begin to lift up. We'll place that left hand onto the right thigh to lift the chest up. Now, if you have blocks, you can always keep those blocks underneath your hands. But if you don't have blocks, what we wanna think of in our low lunge is the back leg. The back leg is gonna help us to stay balanced here in this posture. Either the shin, the top of the ankle, or the top of the foot presses into the mat. Now, if you keep your, your left toes curled, you'll press into that big toe, maybe the second toe, and find how that's gonna help you keep the balance here. Lift your left arm up toward the sky. Lift your right arm up toward the sky. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, bend the elbows, sigh it out, prana mudra. Inhale again, lift the arms up. Exhale, prana mudra, a little bit of a balance for our challenge challenge for our balance. Lower the hands down and lower the right knee down. Come into the second 
inside. Left foot steps forward. Find your balance. Place left hand to left thigh. Slide the right hand back as you lift the chest. And then place right hand onto the left thigh to come into your low lunge pose. Lift right arm up, lift left arm up. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, bend the elbows, sigh it out, prana mudra. What is your right foot doing? What is the right leg doing? Can it help support you? Exhale to bend and soften. Lower the hands down, lower the left knee down, and meet me seated facing the front of the room. Bring the soles of your feet together for Baddha Konasana. Now, a lot of times when we come into Baddha Konasana, we take our hands to our feet and we bring our heels into our groins and into our buttocks. And this causes a lot of pain and, and it can cause a lot of pressure on the knees, unnecessary pressure for the knees. So what we wanna do in this posture is bring our hands behind our buttocks and then bring our buttocks closer. And our knees are gonna tell us when we've gone too far. If we've gone too far, we just bring those feet out a little bit further in front of us. Take an index finger and middle finger, place them together and place them in between the big toes. Inhale to lengthen through the chest. Exhale to lean forward. As you lean forward, once again, we hinge from the hips. There's never a rounding in the spine, even when we're in our cat pose that rounding is actually coming from the action in the pelvis. So the pelvis right now is doing that same action. We're bringing the chest toward the feet and maybe you press your elbows into your thighs. The gaze droops directly out in front of the tip of the nose. And use your hands to press yourself up and extend your legs out in front of you. Place your hands behind the back of the right thigh and bend the right knee and let the center of the right foot be right at the center of the left thigh. Right hand comes behind for our seated twist. Lift the left arm up toward the sky. Wrap the left arm over the right knee and turn and twist to, to the right. Relax the left shoulder down, press out through the left heel. Take a breath in, find length, find the support of the earth beneath you. Exhale, soften into where you can find sensation. Relax muscles in the face. And take two more rounds of breath. Gently unwind, roll back to center. Send your right leg long. Bend your left knee, bring your hands behind the thigh. I'm going to turn this way so it's easier for you to see me what this twist looks like. So you see that the center of my left foot is in line with my right knee. I bring my left hand behind me and when we use it as a kickstand we want to, we want to let it help us lift the chest. You see all that space I'm getting. What we don't want to do is lean back into it. That's going to put too much pressure in the shoulder girdle. We lift the right arm up, wrap it over the left knee, inhale to lengthen, and exhale to turn and twist. So this action is coming in the thoracic spine. It's coming in the left ribs. The left ribs are wrapping behind us so that we can bring those right ribs forward. Relax to the shoulders, press out through the right heel. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, gently unwind. You're going to lower down onto your back. Once you get down onto the back, hug your knees into your chest. Take a little rock side to side to massage the back. Even if you have a, a blanket or a pillow, please don't use it right now. As we're going to practice a bridge pose. Lower the feet down to the mat. Now there's a few different variations of bridge pose that we can practice. 
And what you want to feel for starters are the four corners of the feet in contact with the mat. Bridge pose is really wonderful because it helps us to build strength in our quad muscles. These are the muscles that support the, the knee joint, the patella. And the knee joint can get, um, it can have a, a whole host of problems. Probably nothing I need to tell you guys about because you already know what I'm talking about. Some of you do. And we also want to find and build some strength in our calf muscle. Setu Bandha Bridge Pose is a really, really great place to build strength in the quads and in the calf muscles. So we want to feel those four corners of the feet in contact with the mat. And we want to feel that the legs are active. The heels are scrubbing the mat forward as if the heels are trying to press away from the knees. And the big toes are engaged. Inhale, feel the sacrum, the back of the pelvis, press into the mat. Feel the length of the spine into the mat as you lift the arms up on the inhale. Let the backs of the hands come to the back of the mat behind you, palms to face the sky. Now notice the ribs here. You melt the ribs down toward the hips. There's still a little lift in the low back. Inhale to lift the arms up, bring the hands back down to the sides. Take two more rounds. Inhale to lift the arms up. Let them come all the way behind you at the end of the inhale. Exhale to lift the arms up. Bring the hands down by the sides. One last round, lift up. Find that the legs are still active even though we haven't moved the hips yet. Lower the arms down. Stay active in the legs. When you lift the arms, press the hips up toward the sky. This can be a very little press up. Doesn't have to be a really big press up. Arms come behind you. Exhale, lower the hips down. Stay active in the legs. Release the arms down. And then relax all the muscles, but find the natural arch to the low back. Inhale, lift up, press hips up. Be active in the feet and the legs. Arms come behind. Exhale, lower the hips down, lower the arms down and completely relax all the muscles. One more round, inhale, lift up for dynamic bridge. Exhale, lower down. Once the hips come down, find the neutral spine, release the arms. Now step your feet so that they are close together. Take the arms out wide, backs of the hands onto the floor, windshield wipers. Release the knees over to the left and turn your gaze to the right. Back to center, knees to the right, gaze to the left. Take four more rounds on each side. That's a total of eight more rounds of breath. Feel into all the spaces where we created awareness in the body. Notice your breath. And when you finish with your last round, come back to center, bring your right knee into your chest and send your left leg long. Here's our inhale position, knee into the chest. Exhale, open the right knee out to the side. Inhale, knee into the chest. Exhale, separate knee down twist. Use your left hand to pull the right leg across the body. Inhale at center. Exhale once again. We'll do one more version of our vinyasa. Inhale, bring the knee into the chest. Exhale, separate knee down twist. Inhale, roll back to center. Exhale, lengthen right leg long. Inhale, left knee into the chest. Exhale, open the knee out to the side, send right arm out to the side. Inhale, knee into the chest, switch the hands. Exhale, separate knee down twist. Inhale at center, one last round. Exhale, open knee out wide, extend right arm out to the side. Inhale, knee into the chest, switch out the hands. Pull left knee across the body, separate knee down twist. Roll back onto the spine, hug the knees into the chest, open the arms out to the sides, hover twist the knees to the right, turn your head to the left. Back at center, 
One more time, hover twist, knees to the left, gaze to the right. Come back to center, lower your feet down to the mat, lengthen your legs, close your eyes. If you need support, offer yourself support underneath the back of the head or behind the backs of the knees. And prepare for a Shavasana. Once you get situated, take a breath in through the nose and sigh all the air out of the mouth.
Notice the space of silence. Notice the space of stillness. Always the movement of the breath is present. But the body at rest in stillness, the mind at rest in stillness. Notice all the areas that we focused on today in your practice. Feel into the space of those areas, the awareness that we cultivated. Our practice doesn't end the minute we leave the mat. It's actually when it begins. The practice on our mat teaches us how to bring this practice off of the mat and into our lives. So we can cultivate an awareness at all times of what's going on in the body. Invite your breath to gently deepen. Bend into the right knee and bring the right foot to the mat. Bend into the left knee and bring the left foot to the mat. Roll your body over to your right hand side. Take your time, move nice and slowly to come into a fetal position. Bend the right elbow and rest your head to the inside of the right arm. And take your left hand and place it onto your heart. Thank yourself for coming to your practice today. And then thank your physical body for its ability to move you through these postures. Use your hands to press yourself up and come into a comfortable seated pose, facing the front of the room. The legs can be crossed or however you feel most comfortable. Invite your hands to come into heart center for Anjali Mudra. Touch your thumbs into your sternum, close the eyes and gently bow your chin into your chest as you feel your sternum is still lifted. And feel into the palms. Notice the gratitude of the practice that we hold into the palms. Let this gratitude release into the heart center. And let that awareness of the practice carry you throughout the rest of the day, throughout the rest of your weekend or your week, or whenever you're watching this video. And as we think about the teachers that stand before us, let's take a moment to honor their teachers that came before them and their teachers that came before them. And then look into the teacher within you. The most important teacher, the teacher that resides within the center of your heart. Take a moment to honor that teacher. Now on this next inhale together, let's all breathe in peace, love, and compassion towards ourselves. Exhale, share this peace, love, and compassion. Let it spread throughout the room, throughout the world, and throughout the universe. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide throughout your practice today. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Go in peace, Om Shanti, and Namaste. Thank you for joining me on my channel, That Girl's Yoga. If you feel so inclined, please subscribe and press like on my videos that you're enjoying watching. And I'll continue to bring you some more of these videos as we learn to move through this new awareness in this time in life that we live in. I'm just happy that we're all doing it together and that we get to share in this practice with one another. Namaste. Bye everybody.